Hi guys, 10 important tips to master the TI Inspire perfectly and not get trapped. So let's do this in order. Cube root. How do we enter cube roots? First, we're going to create a new document and of course we're going to select add calculator. So how do you do cube root? It's pretty simple. Root and then x comma 3. That gives you the cube root. How are you going to get the fifth root, for example? x comma 5. Easy enough, right? Next, logarithms with different bases. If you type in log of x, by default you have log base 10. If you want a different base, such as base 2, just write comma 2, and you have base 2. Now, Euler number. Euler number is e to the x button. Okay, if you do e to the 1, comma 0, you're going to see the Euler number 2.71. It's a constant. Notice the e is bold. If you fall for the letter e and do e to the 1, you're just going to get letter e. That's a variable e. So the variable e is different from the Euler constant e. Okay? So all of these letters down here are constants. Like if you put an M, that's a constant. You can assign a value to M if you want. You can do it like that. M is defined as 5. So now, notice the M is bold and has a value 5. Okay? And then you can use that throughout. Next, fractions. Fractions and parentheses, very important. If you want to divide 8 divided by 4 plus x. Notice the 4 plus x has to be in parentheses. If you don't use parentheses and you just write 8 divided by 4 plus x, then you notice that the 8 gets divided by the 4 to make it 2 plus the x. So whenever you use fractions, always put your denominator and also recommend the numerator in parentheses. Example, x plus 8 divided by x minus 9. Okay? So you saw we have both in parentheses, so we have parentheses for numerator and denominator. And that way you can't go wrong. Remember, parentheses are free. So rather use them too often than too few. Next, important x times y. If you type xy, for example, you do implicit differentiation, or you want to just multiply two variables, xy, textbooks write, x, write xy. You don't, cannot write that on the TI Inspire because it thinks it's a variable named xy. Instead, you must write x times y and then press enter. You notice the difference, the time symbol in between. So now you can evaluate this term. Let's say x is 10. So you can do the evaluate sign, which is here. Control equal sign. And then the vertical line, x equals, I said, 10. So, and then we can see it's 10 times y. If you were to do the same with x, y, evaluate it with x equals 10, calculator uh, will just leave it as that. Notice? Okay, so it doesn't recognize that x, y is x times y. So you have to tell the calculator that. Next, degree and radian. Notice up here it says degree, change to radian by just clicking on it, okay? It's that simple. Click, 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 you change from degree to radian. Well, that also brings us to trig functions. All the trig functions are hidden under the trig button. There you see them. Sine of, let's say, pi is zero. We Notice we are in radian mode. Sine of pi over two. Sine of pi over four. Okay, root two over two. If I now change to degrees and do sine of pi over 
4, it just says sine of pi over 4. Okay, because this is supposed to be degrees. So sine of 90 degrees is 1. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Okay, so switch degree radian. If you're in physics, you're in degree. If you're in calculus, you're in radian. Next, symbols and catalog. Notice a button under Dell, under delete button here, the catalog button. You see this one here? This one has all the commands that you ever want to use. Okay? If you want to, for example, solve an equation, you can just scroll down and find solve. And down here, you can see how to use the solve command. It, it requires an equation, comma, a variable. So let's do that. Solve an equation. Let's do something really complicated. And if I close it, I get an error because I was not obedient. I had to enter a variable such as x, and then x equals 3 will solve it. If I change that to 10, I get x equals 10 over 3. It works like a charm. It gets even better. If I have a instead of 3, it gives me the answer in terms of a, 10 over a, and it gets even better. If I don't want to solve for x but for a, I can do that too. It gives me a is 10 over x. Okay, so that's how you can use the solve command, uh, which is, by the way, different from the end solve command. End solve will not work with variables like that. Okay, a has to be a number such as 3, and then it numerically solves 3.33 instead of getting 10 over 3 we got earlier. Okay, so this is for the engineers here, and solve. It finds decimal answers instead of exact answers. But always remember this catalog button here. Under tab 1 are all these all the commands. In number 2 are the commands as well, but here they are broken down by a math discipline. Algebra, trigonometry, calculus, etc. Okay, so say you, you know calculus, you want to find a derivative, you just select that command, D for derivative, and then type in um, x to the 5, for example, comma x uh, as your variable, and you get your correct derivative. Okay, that's how you do the derivatives. By the way, insider information, if you press shift minus, you don't have to go to catalog, but that's a shortcut. You notice I have the pre-entry form, um, or quick entry. I have that here also, quick entry of, uh, let's say, x to the 5. And of course, I get the same answer. So remember that. Shift minus allows you to quickly find a derivative. And with the shift minus, the shift plus to quickly find an integral. Say you want to find the definite integral from 1 to 4 of the function x squared with respect to x, enter 21, okay? Shift plus, shift minus. Remember that for those of you that take calculus. Um, but I'm not done yet here in the catalog. So here is uh, the commands for calculus. Here's everything for statistics. I mean, for that, you can really spend a day and uh, look through all the options there, finances, test, every, I mean, finances, you know, time value, amortization, cash flow, everything right here. Tab three, you can convert area, length, um, very useful conversion tool. In four, you have all the symbols in math that are typically used, the dreaded theta, uh, uh, angle in, in, in trigonometry, i, e, pi, etc. So when you can scroll down, you see the entire Greek alphabet and all the symbols that uh, you could possibly use. Here, five. Look at this. Quick entry. You want to quickly enter a fraction? Well, just select one and then it gives you 
uh, an outline of what you want to type in. So you don't have to use the parentheses that I mentioned earlier. You can just go to catalog, option 5, and type in a fraction, or here option 2 is an exponent. So if you want to type in 4 squared, you can do that. You could also enter 4 squared by, of course, doing 4 and then the exponentiation symbol 2. Okay? So as in many things in life, there's many different ways you can solve something. Um, what else we got here? Oh, by the way, the cube root symbol is here. This next one is square root. It says it down here as well. And the next one is the nth root. So if you want to do the cube root like we did before, cube root of 8 is 2. Or the cube root of x. I can just go back. You saw what I did. Highlight, enter, cube root of x. Okay? So this is a really nice, nifty way. Logarithm also. Say we want logarithm of base 2. And here's a question for you. What's log base 2 of 8? If you know that 8 is 2 cubed, you know the answer is 3. There you go. So we did the symbols, the catalog, we did the trick entries, we did the trick functions, which are all here behind the trick uh, button. Um, also, remember down here on the bottom left is the pi button. Let me exit here. The pi button, which has the most common constants in math, quickly accessible. Lastly, graphing. And then we're done. Graphing, let's say we want to do a new document, add graphs, and then it's already prompting me to enter my function. I say x squared, and it's being graphed here. If I want to change it, I just have to double-click the graph and say minus 4, press enter again. And if I want to add another function, um, I just double click the graph and then key down brings me to F2 and let's say we're going to graph the 4 minus x squared graph and then we have two graphs that we're dealing with. Now you want to know where, what are the zeros, what are the x-intercepts or the, sorry, the intersection points, etc. All of that is found by pressing the menu button and then you go to analyze. Okay, you can see the zeros, min, max, intersection point. Let's do intersection. So look here on the bottom. It says lower bound. Uh, I just have to be somewhere left of the actual intersection. Press enter. Now it's asking for the upper bound. Got to be somewhere to the right. And it's already previewing the intersection, negative 2, 0. And there we are. You can put that intersection point to wherever you want it to be. You could also delete it if you want. But there we go. That's the intersection point, negative 2, 0. Um, let's go back, analyze graph. Um, how do you find a, let's say, maximum? Well, the same way. First, is look in the box on the bottom left. What graph are you finding the maximum of? Well, the red graph. So we're going to click it. Lower bound is really left bound. Somewhere left of the maximum. Press enter. Upper bound is to the right. Press enter. And you can see the maximum is at 0, 4. Drag the point wherever you want it to be. Okay? So in that way, you can analyze your graph. Um, maybe lastly, how do you find, for calculus, how do you find the slope? Asking which graph, let's say the blue graph, position at x equals 1. I press 1, and there we go. I get a slope of 2, and that is correct. The slope at this point is 2. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, email us support at tiinspireapps.com. I'm also going to put a link to our blog uh, here below the video where you can read this in slow motion or just re-watch the video. Thanks very much and have a good day.